All right, mud lovers, on this mud venture, I take a trip out of London. Let me explain. So one day, I received a message from a charming man named Paul, who told me he mudlarks in a town called Gosport, which is on the other side of the river to Portsmouth on the south coast of England. You know Portsmouth, it's home to the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's flagship ship. He told me he found a load of beautiful military tags from the old barracks, and would I like to give it a go too? Oh hell yeah! Not only are those tags to be found, but there's loads of other mud flats we can explore, loads of other treasures to be uncovered. Plus we can search around Rat Island, a place where a few years back, coffins had been eroding out of the bank and skeletons recovered, thought to be the bodies of those prisoners of the hulks in the 1800s. So naturally, I jumped to the chance and invited me old mate Chris too. He said, Good Lord man, yes please old chap, put me down for a bit of that, hoorah! And as quick as you can say COVID in the Weatherspoons pub, we were there. We'd also meet up with Richard, who has searched this area before, and also Nigel, who is writing a book on metal detecting. So we have three aims from our two day trip. The first is to find a tag or something military from World War II. Two, go mudlarking on the mudflats and find something interesting from the local area. And thirdly, visit Rat Island and find the grave cuts and detect around the island and then hopefully find something cool and interesting. All right, my lovers, how you doing? I'm with Chris, addicted to Hello. Rats. He's here live in the flesh with me. And we're going to go mudlarking, which means looking for anything old and interesting once the tide has receded. Gospel has got an amazing maritime and naval history. There's going to be all sorts here in the mud. As you can see there down below, there's all sorts of bricks and things that we like to get stuck in. Chris it's is everywhere. A, he's a bit of a mudlarking novice, so I'll, I'll guide him today and we're going to try and find some relics to share with you. Some glass. There we go. There is we that go. old? No, it's probably a beer bottle from last week. But um, we could do better than that. I'm sure we will when we get some luck in the muck. So Chris, um, I've, I've heard, I've been watching your channel, as I do, and you keep banging on about your um, camera and your, what's it called, your um, exposure and stuff like that. So I thought I'd be kind and I'd buy you a new camera. Now don't get excited. I thought you was going to paint my face red. No. <laughs> so, the camera, so the camera just exposed. Oh, that'd be a good yeah. idea. Yeah, get the makeup out. There you go, no, but, but I've got him a little present. This oh. is uh, this is from me to you. Really? What is this? Oh, you, you have to find out. You haven't you haven't preempted me on this at all. This is so out of order. <laughs> is it a joke? It's a joke, isn't it? I, I know you. <laughs> oh no! Not these. <laughs> These are a bit like, uh, it's a bloody as a nursery over there, man. I can't wear these. Of course you can. If anybody, if, if people don't know, this is uh, uh, spy glasses, right? <laughs> yeah. Apparently, yeah. And there's a camera inside there. <laughs> is there a camera yeah, inside there? There's a camera inside, there? yeah. You have to turn one in a sec. But that way, you'll never have any more camera issues. And do you know what? Seven ninety nine from Wish. So you can't <laughs> go wrong. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and he's actually mine. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Yeah, oh, thank you. And they work. What you got to do, right? To make him feel. And they work. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm trying to get it work as a nightmare. Anyway, <laughs> the funny thing is, right? I'm trying to get this work at home, so we were all prepared for this for this trip, yeah, and yeah. Um, they wouldn't work. Wouldn't work. So I phoned, I emailed Wish to say. You yeah, phoned Wish. <laughs> I phoned up the Wish guy. I said, look, your, your cameras, your, your cameras, uh, your glasses are rubbish. He's like, oh, I'll just give you your money back. And then I'll put a new SIM card in, and then they work. So I got they're actually free, it didn't cost me anything. Oh, so, that's fantastic. There we go. That makes me feel really worthless. <laughs> um, so what does this shoot in? 35p? Yeah. <laughs> it's this HD, but it's not, it's 640. <laughs> they really suit you though, man. Thanks, man. Actually, they do, they do suit you, actually. I've been looking for, like, some because I'm getting older and my eyesight's going, I've been really scared about glasses. But this, mate, the fact that you just fill me with confidence saying that these suit me, it makes me feel like... I could maybe get away with something. Let like me that. take a photo of you, and then we can see. What you can. I'll show you in a sec. How do I look in 33p? Oh, probably much better. <laughs> Welcome to my face. Yeah. This is what my face experiences in real life. My face is currently experienced Simon there. Sci finds in his fantastically marketed orange 
black and white. Says he doesn't adhere to psychological drops concerning colours, but I disagree. Um, <laughs> he's very good with colours. Very good with colours. Oh yeah. I don't know anyone who's any better with at colours than sci fi He's just a colourful man. On our right here, we can see a car approaching. Um, and the drug deal is going to be made. <laughs> Hopefully my disguise here. Is it, uh, can you see, see it happen right? They're a bit misted up, but that's mainly because I'm excited. Yeah, now we have this, um, this is where the drug drop is going to happen. This guy here. Sorry? I've got no idea. We're not... And oh, we're not from here, I'm afraid. So sorry. Right, come on, let's crack on, man. <laughs> well, listen to that. Listen to the tone of that. Uh, these, these are, I've just found out what these are, these are called vent tubes, my mate Steve Taylor's just, I just, because um, I thought they were 303s at first, I thought, just because yeah. they looked like them, didn't they? And then I realised that these rims were a lot more pronounced and there's these little chunks, these little cuts into it there. Yeah. And they're called vent tubes and they're basically primers to large calibre shells, which makes sense considering where we are. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, cool, huh? Nice bit of a military ordnance, but obviously they've been fired, presumably. I guess so, yeah. Cool, man. Wow, yeah. Oh, look, I think that to me looks like it could be a little tag. That's what we're looking for. Oh, what do you reckon? Oh, <laughs> I don't think it is. Oh, it's a, just a part of a pipe or something. Well, this area is incredibly trashy. We've uh, been throwing a few bits in the old bucket there, uh, mainly lead. And bits and bobs but i just found a first half decent find look and this is a little tag probably a key tag keychain tag you just make out number six there that's really cool so uh yeah must have hung off a pair of uh, some keys or something might be some more information on there it's quite crusted up so uh, i'll give that a little clean up and uh yeah, see, what, see if there's any other numbers or whatever on there but no that's one of the stores you know that may be on the ships or barracks or something around here oh that's, that's really cool um, so yeah, hopefully there'll be more of this sort of thing come up. Fantastic! Oh, we've got a little button. Little fly button. I'm hoping there might be a military button around here somewhere. That would be nice, wouldn't it? But no, just so now it's a little brass button. Sweet! Why am I sinking? I've got... I am actually stuck. <laughs> Yes. Look at that. Lovely mud. You're a mud lover now, boy. <laughs> yeah, avoid this. Oh my god. No. How do you do this? Why have you not got thighs like an Amazonian <laughs> wench? Oh, I have. <laughs> So just dug this up, I didn't take you through the whole Dean experience because that can get a bit tiring. Anyway, uh, here it is, fresh up. Uh, you can see it's got a little number there, 98 it looks like, and there's some writing above it. I can't really make it out. It looks like it says lock, so it might just be a lock plate, probably off of a, a door or something. Anyway, I'll clean it up later and let you know what that says. Could be quite interesting. Could be a lost piece of history. <laughs> Well, we found one cool tag and about a million pieces of scrap metal, so we decided to go for a walk around the harbour to see what else we could find on the mudflats and meet up with Nigel and Rich. Well, someone's already stuck in the mud. So our friend Nigel, he's come along to have a little go. And uh, he's got his foot stuck. Shall I go and help? Mm, let's go on filming. Do a fireman's lift. Hey, <laughs> where he's stuck in the mud. Up 
trouble is if you don't pack your wellies full of socks, you guess gonna happen. Oh my hero! Oh man! No! No, don't go in there. So what you got there? Oh I don't know. It's on screws in both, in two places. It's like a trench art, isn't it? I thought on the face of it. It's not, I don't think it's a metal, is it? It feels, it feels too light, it's very strange. It's it does feel it's like metal. Yeah. I've seen... It's very light metal. It is. Hold on. You've got a magnet on you? Yeah. That's really cool though. Yeah, it's awesome. The golden bullet. Yeah, it's obviously, well, I was going to say it's a pendant, but maybe it's it not. It doesn't go the way through, does it? No, it doesn't go the right, right the way through. Have a little look. Yeah. Cheers. That's cool. That is unusual. I mean, yeah. it feels modern, doesn't it? It does. Oh, I think I... It's not a vape thing, is it? Might be. Uh. <laughs> Might be a vapey thing. Oh, right, I wouldn't know. It's just got that weird looking end to it, but. Yeah. What have you, you, you concluded? It's something to do with vaping. No. Oh, it's a pen. Oh, you heartbreak that. <laughs> Don't know, pretty cool though. We'll be able to find one of these on, online, no doubt, just to work out what it is. But it's a pretty cool find. I if it was cold, wouldn't it? No, it was. It's not a suppository, is it? <laughs> <laughs>
Daffy's Elixir. That's really cool. I'm really gutted it's not complete, but it's still a nice little find. There we go. Daffy's Elixir was invented in the 1600s and was said to be an excellent treatment for colic, kidney stones, gout, rheumatism, and a long list of other ailments, including toothache and teething babies. In fact, it seems like it could have treated anything. And this bottle dates to 1830 to 1850. As I said, these are quite rare and a complete version would set you back at least 200 pounds, if not much, much more. Oh yeah, we're done then. Oh, goodness, that was weird. Well, a good old mud lark experience has helped me find a lovely little pipe bowl. Looks like something interesting there, that's just chipped off, but uh, yeah, we'll get that up. Oh, nice. Woohoo! I haven't found that sort of design before. Flutes go all out to the top. That's well, just chipped off at the bottom, or with it's a, uh, yeah, I think it's a little chip. That's cool though. Deep here. No, I think I'll stick to my pipe. My, my, my How's that what they look like? <laughs> That's not what I've been looking for. What have you been looking for then? Uh, something which is more bulbous. <laughs> <laughs> Up until this point, simple Chris thought they were called pipe bulbs, not bowls. <laughs> he needs to watch more mudlarking videos, obviously. Oh, that's cute, isn't it? I found another pipe. Yeah. So I've got two pipes now. Can we stick them onto that? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Puff away, old chap. Oh, so that's what it looks like, right? Yeah. I'm actually kind of like looking for a bowl. What sort of bowl? A bulb. A bulb. They're, not, they're called a bowl. Bowl, not a bowl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I've just found uh, what looks to be like a shotgun shell, but it's quite a big one. And I'm giving it a quick rub, and it says on it, uh, uh, Robson, Diet and Robson of London. It doesn't look like it's been fired. That's pretty cool though. And also, there's like loads of them. There's another one. There's another one right there. Yeah. Like someone's been shooting ducks or something around here. I don't know. But it'll, um, it'll say maker. That's patina. So after a bit of research, I have surmised that these are actually flare gun cartridges and the case was made from cardboard. So I think a load of unfired cartridges fell into the river. The cardboard deteriorated and left behind these head stamps. find a musket ball. They do crop up but they're lovely to find. It shows there's definitely been some history, lots of firing in these various buildings. Well, Rich has found a good, uh, nice little pipe bowl here. Um, it's really nice actually, look, it's got Britannia on it. Yeah, I really like that. Can't make out what's on the other side. It might be another Britannia, it might be it might be uh, Queen Vic or someone, or something rather. Can't quite wear that out, but yeah, cute little pipe bowl. And lots of metal things, which uh, I just put away. So. That's all right, you put them away. There was, I mean, there's some cool things. I think we're gonna go back there tomorrow and have a look around some of these places to detect. So uh, yeah, I think we'll find similar things to what Rich has done today. You coming back tomorrow? Hopefully, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Come on now. Right, now we've got to find Chris. I think he might be in the pub already. I think he's given up for the day, but. Uh... <laughs> he's back. Yeah. Oh, he's there. He's there. Well, Chris is down there. Yeah. Oh, he's obviously gone for a walk. What we found him, good news. Oh man, we've just started hammering it down with rain. It's gonna do this all day apparently, so I've got my wet weathers on, so it should keep dry and warm. Uh, but we're still gonna carry on. You sit there nice and comfortable, we'll be out here looking for the treasure, getting some more luck in the muck, hopefully. Right there. Lovely weather for ducks. Well, just found this. Used to be part of a uh, buckle 
or an old buckle suspension, maybe off a bag or a belt. Definitely military. It's pretty cool, like that. I don't know what the little loop is there. That little loop there is for. So yeah, I'm guessing it's probably off a uniform or some baggage. Cool. I just kicked this as I was walking, and it kicked it out actually. And it's uh, it looks quite interesting on the face of it. It's got that aluminium look about it. I think it might be part of a bomb, as in, you know, part of the uh, timer fuse or the primer. I'm not an expert on uh, military ordnance, but I do know a man who is. So I've got a friend called Stephen Taylor, who's actually a good friend of Chris's. So together, we're gonna ask him and see if he can ID this for us. So yeah, it'd be interesting to know if this, if this is part of the uh, it's a military thing, is it an old piece of ordnance? I can see an inside thread there which suggests it might be. So I'll clean it up. I think I might even be able to see some some numbers on there or some letters maybe just at the top there on the top of that ridge. So uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be some chance to ID it properly. Even though well, I'm sure our friend can help us out. Aha, so look, this could very well be one of the tag plates that I'm looking for. Let's give it a quick quick knock and see if there's anything on it. I don't want to be uh, too brutal because I'm worried I might break it. Although it's quite a chunky one this so I think it might be alright. Anyway I'll uh, clean it with my trowel properly and show you in a second what it could be. Well it was only an escutcheon plate. Nice one though. Got some age to it. Uh, unfortunately it doesn't have any writing or anything to tell us anything more about it but there we go. Keep on looking. Well a little key thingy. Keychain, key ring, belt clip, doodah. Right guys, I just dug this and cleaned it. Uh, another piece of brass. And look, it's got the, the broad arrow, the crow's foot on there to show that it's British military grade and owned. That's really cool. If you ever find anything with that little mark on in England or Britain, that generally means that it's from the British Army or British, uh, yeah, British military. That's really cool, I love that. Found the last little piece of maritime history. Okay, I don't know what it is, it's probably just a latch of something. But it could have been a very important latch. It could have been a latch on something quite important, it could have been gunpowder, uh, anything like that, just to show that it's all military um, goods. Oh, I really like that. It's top find. Well, we moved uh, location again to try a new little spot. Uh, there's loads of places here to try out, we just can't fit it all in in one weekend, but we try loads of spots. I think I spotted a shark in the water. It's either a shark or it's an anchor, but you decide. It's probably an anchor. Well, here we have a nice little piece of uh, World War II shrapnel. That's come out looking very good. Hopefully, that's a good sign that the things in here are actually quite well preserved instead of rotting away. But no, that's really cool. Might make that into a keychain, bang it on the Etsy store at some point. But looks like a little map of Italy again. Little boot shape. <laughs> cool. It is a huge anchor and what appears to be a jeep behind that. Well guys, I've just dug this up, look. That's really hammering down now the rain, but still getting a nice little find out, just like a little heart. Let's give it a little wash. Oh, that's cool. How nice is that? I don't even know what that was for. Is it a little pendant, a little love token? Ah, that's nice. I thought it might be, it'd be good if it was engraved or initial one. Probably had somewhere. Uh, anyway, don't know what that is. That's pretty cool. I like that. Love is in the air. A little uh, 303 tip. It's like turned it silver, this beach. Obviously it's brass, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. This old bike is had enough, so he's going to scooch off back home. Check out his video to see all the stuff he's found and cleaned up. And Chris, addicted to bleeps, that's his channel. Make sure you check it out, it's some great content and there's a couple of me on there as well. Thank you, mate. We checked out a beautiful canal last year, so that's a great video. We had a great time and uh, hopefully we'll go again out. Go out get, uh, hopefully we'll go out again soon. Absolutely, <laughs> I want to do that one again. Yeah, that was cool. But it's not quite over for me yet. I still wanted to visit Rat Island and see those grave cuts for myself. And Rich was on hand to show me around. Well, we are here at the famous Burrow Island, AKA Rat Island, it's just around the corner. So Rich is gonna show us a little bit about the island. We're not allowed to go on it. We're gonna respectfully 
keep our distance because it's MOD property, we're not allowed on it or anyone else is with that special permission. So we're gonna keep our distance and search the mud around it. Now Rich tells me that there's still the uh, train tracks where they used to have a little um, supply line going towards the island. Is that right, Rich? Yeah, the ships used to dock up here, the old warships, and then they'd unload them, bring the munitions down the train track and on offload it pretty hard. There we go. So there's loads of history around here. Not sure what we'll find, but we'll give it a go anyway. Uh, I've got some mudders in the bucket and some trowels and detectors, so we'll give it a quick go and hopefully sort it all out before this storm comes in because it's getting wet and we're getting cold, but we're going to give it our best. Let's get some luck in the muck. about. We found them, the Rat Island Grave Cuts. Archaeologists did some excavations a few years ago after it was discovered that there were coffins eroding out of the banks. They are thought to be the bodies of prisoners aboard the convict ships that used to be moored in Portsmouth Harbour. The only residents these days are ducks. Respectfully keep our distance, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. Fascinating to think what's gone on here all those years ago. Anyway, we'll carry on, see, what, see what's out there, out yonder, have a little look. Might be a clay pipe bowl or something interesting. It's most likely cattle bone or sheep bone. Uh, Captain Kid's leg. And this is a pirate leg. That's nah, too little for that. I'm just trying to check a flag. How weird is that? I did think I was meant to see check a flag, although uh, we are at the finishing line, so nearly done. So on the beach of uh, that island, there's these round ball things and uh, they're pretty cool, unusual. Rich thinks they're probably uh, boys, marker boys, which is a very good shout. But if anybody knows what these could be, they look like mines for a second, you know, like the mines that explode ships that just float in the sea, but that's why they all kind of, they look like they've been exploded, but I think they're just worn away. But yeah, if anybody knows for sure, let me know. If you know, comment below. Well guys, I've just uh, detected my first hole on Rat Island and it's a little midi, uh, midi round. That's really cool. Rich has found a few of these in the past and uh, I was hoping to find one because they are Napoleonic, they're early. Similar sort of ages to all the action that was going on on the island. So yeah, genuine piece of history from Rat Island. Very happy. Rich, have you found one like this before, mate? With the little lines on it. You found some ones that are similar, didn't you? Yeah, if you've got the wooden base cap in there as well. I don't know. No, I think it's just mud. But yeah, you've got the ones I've been finding today. Yeah. Let's Yours see. is bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's cool though, isn't it? Yeah, but that one is a bit of a mystery. Obviously, it's a bullet, a slug of some sort. And you, you, there's a little wooden section in there, is there as yeah, well? Yeah, we've got the wooden base caps, it's supposed to stop the form, I think. Oh, right. Yeah, that's really cool. There we go. Found some history on Rat Island, so I'm happy. Excellent. Well, there's something in that clod. It's not there, is it? Where is it? Is it that? Oh, there we go. It fell out of the clod, another bullet. Sweet! Oh, and well, I've got the wooden bit in it. Yay! That means, uh, that Rich was saying, I don't know if you heard him earlier, but that means it kept the shape. So this is a very thin lead wrapped around wood. Probably to save on lead, when you think about it, because otherwise having a solid lead, when you multiply it by thousands of bullets, you save it a little bit each time you take a little chunk out for the wood. 
So yeah, excellent. Got a little trio of bullets, so happy days. Admittedly, my bullet knowledge is a bit limited, but after doing some research, I believe that the big one is a .577 bullet from a Lee Enfield, dating to around 1850. Oh, got a little coin in the hole, coin in the hole. Um, feels thin and also looks a bit blank. Uh, never mind, it might be, it might be Victorian, it might be Georgian, there might be some detail on there, but um, I'm not holding any uh, hope, really. Oh, we'll see you later. I'll clean it up and see if there's anything on it. So stick around for the clean up. If there is, I'll let you know. I'll just set this up. Um, I thought it was just a washer or something at first. Um, just a you know, bit pipe or something. But there's definitely some letters on it. BP. For one. And something else. So it looks to me like it is some kind of ordinance. The base of a... RL might be Royal Laboratories. BP, I'll be able to find what that means, but yeah, I like that. It has the base of a, you know, some kind of shell, shell casing. There we go, sweet. That's another bit of naval history there. Military naval history. Beautiful. Well, we're just, we're just about to call it a day. Mitch goes, what's that? And uh, he's oh, fantastic. That's an early one. That's the earliest pipe bowl I've had on this trip. So that's like 1770s ish, 1750s. So. Yeah, awesome. And I can tell you're shivering. Oh, yeah. And I'm a bit cold as well. So we're going to call it a day and uh, head back to civilization now. So we're going to walk past, walk on this causeway. Um, it is, uh, it's getting on a bit, it's getting a bit late in the day. But we've had a fantastic time and uh, I loved it. Found some good stuff. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, my lovers. And uh, we'll see you on the next my adventure. So in a minute, I'm gonna make a necklace from that lovely little brass heart. But first, I wanted to clean this aluminium piece of ordnance. And as I'd hoped, upon cleaning, it revealed a number 211. And some other markings. Also, the year, 1944. My friend Stephen Taylor once again came to my aid and told me it's an amplifier section from a British 211 shell. I understand it's part of a proximity fuse and would have been used to take down aircraft. Well, we're going to do a little bit of a quick uh, little upcycle today. Something which you can buy on my eBid store. So stick around and see if you like this one. I'm going to make a little necklace using this beautiful little heart, uh, brass heart. I've cleaned it up really well. It's looking absolutely amazing. Really cool and crude. You know, imagine the stories of this could tell. Was it on the side of a box or was it part of another piece of jewellery? We'll never really know. But I'm going to combine it with a lovely piece of worn clay pipe. That This comes from the Thames and also a lovely glass bead. Uh, again, this one's from the Thames. So a nice little collection there of uh, things that we can make into a beautiful little pendant. Well, I thought I'd take you outside to check out the uh, pendant in all its glory. The chain now is uh, non-adjustable, so you can uh, slip it straight over your neck. It's nice and long. And uh, there we go, look, you've got a beautiful heart there. Clay pipe, finishing off a lovely bead. If you fancy winning it, head on over to my eBid page and have a cheeky bid. 
The link will be in the description below. So until then, stay safe and I'll see you on the next Mod Adventure.